Okay, I wanted to show you something fascinating. There are very few people on Earth that know this. Um, at first you're going to think this is something about New Ageism or nothing, and I have nothing to do with that. Um, but let's talk about an empirical hardcore fact that nobody has the answer to, including the inventor himself. Now, the person before you, I'll give you a link below to two of his videos. His name's George Mizell. Um, my lifelong friend named Tom, I won't give his last name, this is his very close buddy. This guy used to have a large business that he has since uh, offshooted to some other people um, that uh, sell neodymium magnets. He calls himself Super, super Magnet Man. Don't let his uh, southern accent fool you. Actually, the guy's a genius, and uh, I think he's actually done some top-secret work for some government, some hush-hush stuff. Um, but um, he talks about uh, pyramid magnets, and uh, they're permanent neodymium iron boron ceramic magnets, but unlike cylinder magnets and cube magnets and sphere magnets, um, uh, pyramidal magnets uh, have what, now nobody knows this except for me, and I'll tell you why it works and how it works. We're going to actually talk about real, genuine pyramid power, okay? Not New Age crap, not Giza pyramids, not alien crap, but, you know, genuine, hardcore pyramid power that can be empirically measured with a Gauss meter. Now, a Gauss meter actually sends a current along a semiconductor, along a probe tip that uh, measures a magnetic flux density. But as is the case, even though we have these devices, nobody actually knows what magnetic flux density is. We have representations for it, and of course it is measured in Gauss and Tesla. But since fields are not particles, how magnetism works and what it is, nobody knew you know, until I wrote my book, and uh, of course it's divinely simple. So here is uh, George Mizell actually holding uh, one of his uh, large neodymium uh, magnets that he has specially produced uh, for the use in the Hallback Array. Here he is actually holding his Hallback Array. Now he uh, changed the alignment uh, along various vectors at 45 degree angles, polarized vertically, uh, polarized horizontally, and polarized at a 45 degree angle. And on the inside he actually uh, stacked various disk magnets to uh, get the flux density up past 10,000 Tesla, I mean 10,000 Gauss, which is one Tesla. He's actually uh, constructed ones that are stronger than that, and then these are used for scientific testing. Now these are actual magnets used in empirical experimentation. Um, one either in a Hallback array for, or for various experimentation. Here he is actually showing the principle of stacking magnets to create a pyramid. And now that actually changes the flux density at the top. Here you can see him with his uh, Gauss meter probe at the tip of one of his 2 inch, which tapers to 1 inch N50 Gauss neodymium iron boron. And I think it comes out at uh, 6,000. Gauss, so 0.6 Tesla, extremely powerful, especially for a permanent magnet. Now, a specific Hallback array by using tinier and tinier magnets inside the Hallback array, in addition to the large pyramidal magnets, which have uh, various alignments of their polarized array. Now, the entire uh, superstructure right here is a really uh, strong uh, steel framework inside which the ceramic magnets are placed. And inside their uh, smaller and smaller magnets, uh, one side over here actually has a hole all the way through the steel frame up to the magnets that allows uh, for uh, probe testing. And uh, this one, I think, uh, tests out at three Teslas. And for a permanent magnet, that is just insanely powerful. Here he is showing uh, actually one of his uh, smaller one-inch pyramidal magnets, and he actually stacks that using a wooden block wedge on this two-inch to a one-inch uh, pyramid magnet, uh, which creates this little pyramid. So here's an actual case of hardcore empirical actual pyramid power. But nobody knows how it works. But I understand how it works, and it's really rather, very simple. I mean, field dynamics are incredibly complex, but they're divinely simplex. Here he shows uh, one of his uh, larger 2-inch by 2-inch by 2-inch um, pyramidal magnets, which actually has a small platform on top in which he places uh, little tiny disk magnets and then tiny little cube magnets. And what happens is, is that... Uh, what these magnets are actually doing, uh, because of their pyramidal shape, to get this enormously high Gauss reading at the very tip of the magnet, when only present at the tip of the magnet, not at the base, is it is no different than the fluid dynamics that one sees out of a fireman's hose, where you actually have X pressure of water that is brought through a constrictor. You know, for analogy, so you can understand it more simple, 
the flux density changes because it is passed through a dielectric constrictor. Now here we have a hose, which is a metal constrictor. For the water, it increases pressure exponentially, so it uh, amplifies the uh, Gaussian uh, pressure flux density. Now, let me uh, show you something over here. How a standard magnet works. This is my little diagram. Here we have a cylinder magnet, just showing the field strength. In the middle here, we have the dielectric inertial plane. We have the centrifugal divergent magnetism and the centripetal returning magnetism, and likewise so on the other side. Now, it doesn't matter whether a magnet is spherically shaped or cube or, or cylinder or disc. Um, uh, you know, the field can only express itself one way, but in creating a magnet, um, that is shaped like a pyramid. Now you can't make it extremely long like uh, what happens is, is that unlike this uh, jet nozzle for water you can't actually make it extremely long and with a very fine tip on it. While that would work for water of course it cannot work for magnetism. Uh, ultimately in the case of magnetism the dielectric constrictor which forms the actual physical body of the magnet, of the ceramic magnet here, what happens is it actually uh, leaks outside because the uh, field flux density will become so incredibly high that once you reach a certain point, that if you plan on making a pyramid magnet that's extremely long and tapered, what happens is, is it extends out past a certain point. The flux density will become so incredibly high that it will leak out the other side. In the case of magnetism, in the case of a magnet, what we have here, and you have to think of this in your head, and you have to pause to think about it, is a hose that empties out and pours back into itself. As is the case with any magnet, you have centrifugal divergent and centripetal convergent. Um, there's no such thing as magnetic acceleration, excuse me, magnetic attraction and magnetic repulsion. Everything is based upon uh, dielectric voidance and countervoidance. In the case of the magnet, what we have, what the field finds the field incommensurability, is literally analogously like a hose that empties itself out and, uh, and uh, drains itself out through the very portal from which it originally came and it finds a null point along the dielectric inertial plane. You can actually see that inertial plane, the point of zero force in motion, uh, even with magnetic viewing film. It's the midpoint of any magnet. Um, before getting into pyramid magnets a little further, as I've told you prior, here would be the dielectric inertial plane with these uh, green concentric circles right here, the midpoint of the magnet. Now this forms a hyperboloid, okay? As the magnetism expresses itself in this very day called magnetism in the dielectric field, which is exactly what it is, magnetism is literally the radiation of the loss of inertia. Um, there's only one field. Dielectricity, magnetism, electricity, and gravity are all nothing other than four, four modalities of speaking about the expression of inertia, i.e. the ether or a field. Now, fields are not particles, and everything is fields, but um, particles, uh, you know, ultimately are reducible to fields. I mean, ultimately, you know, fields have nothing to do whatsoever with particles. I mean, even your most uh, intelligent, so to say, uh, particle physicists know this. This is why Particle physicists has no uh, possibility of ever explaining the universe because they think everything is based upon particles. But, you know, fields are not particles. Instantaneous uh, action at a distance obviously denotates communicator particles. You know, this is an impossibility. For them, obviously, the notion of traveling the faster than the speed of light is an impossibility. But instantaneous action at a distance, we know for a fact, definitely exists. And since par fields are particle-free, you know, we have to leave out uh, the physical, physicality, i.e. Uh, uh, quanta. Quantum, i.e. quantity, literally is nothing other than Greek rehashed atomism. But getting back to the fascinating uh, pyramid magnet, here's the actual expression of how the extrapolation of the field incommensurability occurs inside of a pyramid magnet. Now, if we place this alongside our conventional magnet, whether this be a cube magnet or a sphere magnet or a, um, a cylinder magnet, uh, it always expresses itself that way, where you have equal geometries on either side, whether that's sphere, cube, or a cylinder. But in the case of a pyramid magnet, where we have hardcore empirical fact that the Gaussian flux you know, is incredibly, incredibly high you know, at the tip of a pyramid magnet, I mean, it's an empirical fact. What occurs inside the pyramid magnet is this. Now, the blue sphere indicates uh, uh, the 
the, the sphere of, uh, of uh, field flux density, which would necessarily uh, extrapolate itself out to equal components uh, from either pole. And of course, getting further, I've mentioned in other videos, a magnet doesn't actually have poles. It has the inverse of counter space. Um, the inverse of counter space, i.e. non-Euclidean geometry, is the expression of the creation of space and motion. In other words, there's no magnetic field in space. Space is nothing other than the attributional byproduct of the expression of a divergent uh, field, such as electricity and specifically, of course, magnetism. Uh, we know for a fact that no field is ever terminated in space. Tesla himself said, uh, you know, without end that the notion what, that space was something that acted on something or that did something was an absolute insanity. This uh, basis of current day physics and Einsteinian uh, upside down stupid logic is what Tesla railed against. But here we can see red, we see the magnetic flux density of the divergent magnetism which is extrapolating itself out to centripetal convergence to the base of the pyramid magnet. And the pyramid magnet itself here is represented as this yellow line. The blue line is a dielectric inertial plane. The dielectric inertial plane will always occur at the midpoint of any magnet. Now if you're able to take any magnet and uh, put it through a salami cutter, if, as you will, and make a thousand slices, a million slices, if you're able to cut it even to a billion slices, every single slice of a magnet it will have a north pole and a south pole. This is irrefutable. I mean, you could take uh, a bar magnet and break it two times, a thousand times, a million times. Each little piece will have a north pole and a south pole. So what we have here is something called incommensurability. It's an extremely simplex principle that has a very difficult explanation uh, for common uh, Western conceptual understanding. But as you can see here, by actually changing the physical parameters of the actual magnet to pyramidal shape, what we do is we increase the fluxian density at the uh, point. And in this case, it doesn't have to be a point. It could be a, a much smaller plateau. Say we have a two-inch base tapering to a three-quarter inch top. What we have here is an extremely high Gaussian flux density, which is absolutely no different than the fluid dynamics we spoke of in our uh, fireman's hose, where we have X water pressure here, but we have uh, increased uh, force and motion up here. Now, people had a really hard time understanding when I actually uh, explained it in another video that increasing uh, acceleration was uh, decreasing uh, force and motion. Now, this is something that is very hard for people to understand. I understand it very simply, but here we have inertia and acceleration decreasing force and motion. This is what the common human idiot refers to as magnetic attraction. Inverse poles, you know, accelerating towards one another, and people say, what do you mean increasing acceleration equals decreasing motion? This is contrary to or a primitive uh, human understanding of acceleration equaling motion. You hit on the accelerator on the gas pedal of your car, you increase in motion. That's all we think of, but in the case of Mother Nature and uh, how fields work, increasing acceleration equals decreasing motion. As these two magnets actually accelerate towards each other, what they're actually doing is they're actually... Uh, um, uh, eliminating out uh, the space, the void in between them uh, to uh, come to a point of counter space. It's non Euclidean uh, uh, field incommensurable point that is forming between these two and they're accelerating towards one another. Here we have like poles, and this is what we refer to as magnetic repulsion, but magnetic repulsion doesn't exist. What this is is increasing force in motion. What we have here is an increasing sphere. You can actually see this underneath the ferro cell. What happens is, well, it's actually extremely complex to explain, but you have a, if you actually push these together tight enough that what will happen is you'll actually cause the sphere to, uh, to uh, the, the field flux to actually empty out in a region over here of counter space on either side such that instead of the, the point of counter space erasure occurring right here it occurs at a 90 degree angle which is everything we know about electromagnetism and field theory but nobody understands this but I can actually see it underneath the ferrule cell and it's exactly what I predicted but that's a point for another discussion but uh, that is how the pyramid magnet works is that uh, the fluxing density is so high uh, that it actually causes the divergent magnetism to bottle up like water through a jet nozzle of a fireman's hose and uh, George Mizell um, created these and uh, don't I'll put the link to his videos below but like I said don't let his country accent fool you the guy is actually a genius you'll think oh well this guy's a you know a, a southern bumpkin but he's actually extremely intelligent so don't let that 
don't let that fool you. Um, like here is, uh, like I said, as before, is uh, his uh, Hallback array that uh, produces uh, three Teslas. And uh, so this is empirically measurable. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later. Bye.